welcome to the first Death Had Diced guest bat rap featuring a thousand point battle between Tyranids and Necrons. A big thanks goes out to both Phil and Les for providing the footage for this game. Much appreciated, guys. We'll start off looking at Les's Necrons. He's brought two squads of warriors, nine in each squad, led by a lord with Mind Shackle, Scarabs, Resurrection Orb, and Staff of Light, and they are both mounted into Ghost Arcs. He also has a squad of nine Immortals, led by an Overlord with uh, Mind Shackle, Scarabs, Resurrection Orb, and War Scythe, and he's also brought a squad of five Scarabs. Moving on to Phil's Tyranids, he brought 16 Gene Stealers with Toxin Sacks, a Doom of Malenkai, three Tyranid Warriors with Scything Talons, two with Death Spitters, one with a Barb Strangler. The Tyranid Prime is also attached to this unit, and he has Scything Talons and a Death Spitter. There's 18 Termagants with Devourers, 20 Hormagants with Scything Talons, and two squads of three Spore Mine Clusters, which are unpictured, and a Zone Thrope. Now we'll see the, do the roll to see who goes first. And it looks like the Tyranids will be going first. So we'll take a look at the table and how Les and Phil set up. The terrain was laid out by Les's kids, so big thanks there. And you'll see the black pieces that look like crude are actually the spore mines. So as part of the rule for the spore mine clusters, they get deep striked in before the beginning of the turn. Now, the Les's vehicles appear to be deployed, but they're actually just on the table. Now, Phil realized after doing this that the, the spore mines are supposed to deep strike, so they're all, all of them are supposed to come in in base-to-base -base contact. Unfortunately, we didn't do that, but uh, we are aware of that and won't make sure that mistake doesn't happen again. So on to Tyranids turn one. So the spore mines are going to move again. It's a random move. And I believe there's six of them. Originally they were going to be one squad of six, but Phil actually broke them down into two squads of three. Which less agreed to. So on to the Gene Stealers. So they're moving up their full six inches. I think you can tell Phil comes from a Warhammer Fantasy background with the way he moved his Tyranids up there, or sorry, his Gene Stealers up. So the Doom of Malachi is moving up. Now the Tyranid Prime and the Tyranid Warriors. And then all the Hermagants, or Termagants. Well, it's one of the two. And next up, the Zone Throp's going to move up as well, and then the Hormagons. These are Hormagons, the other ones are Termagons. I'm sure I'll figure it out before the time this game is over. So next up in the shooting phase, the Tyranids are going to run up. Sorry, the Gene Steelers are going to run up, so they get a two-inch run. And next up, the Doom Malachi is going to run, and he gets a five-inch run. Phil's not quite sure where he wants to put this one down. Next up, the Warriors are going to run. I'm going to get a, a one and now the Termagants are going to run. They get a four. And they're staying behind some cover. Try to avoid those weapons from the Necrons. Next up, the Zone Throp is going to run. He's just moving three inches a little bit behind more cover. And now the Hormagants are running up as well. With Bounding Leap, they get to roll three dice and then take the highest for their run roll. And that brings us to Necron turn one. So Les starts off by moving his Immortals up six inches to get a better firing line. And now he gets to do some target practice on the Spore. So he starts off with the Immortals. They get 18 shots, of which 12 of those hit, and it causes nine wounds. And because the AP is higher on the than the spore mines, it's an instant death. And when the spore mines get hit, wounded and taken out, of, they get that blast template taken over them. So, so next up, the ghost arc is going to fire, and they got ten shots, of which six hit and four wound. And that takes out another one of the spore mines. 
Next up, the the other Ghost Arc is going to fire on another one of the Spore Mines. They get 10 shots, 7 hits, and 6 wounds. Again, taking another Spore Mine, but the explosion doesn't seem to do any damage against less. And next up, the Warrior Squad. They get 18 shots, which 13 hit, and 9 wound. And again, explodes with no damage done to less. So that brings us to the end of turn 1. As you can see, the... Uh, the horde is about to pounce on those uh, those Necrons. They've seen Necrons have positioned themselves and to get a couple good firing lanes. I think those spore mines were a good delaying tactic. It prevented uh, less from f focusing on the uh, the guys in behind. So click on the link to see part two of this video. And remember, if you want to see more of these bat wraps, please subscribe. Because the more subscriptions we got, the more people we know are watching and we're more likely to do them, make more of them. If you have any comments or questions about the bat wrap, please feel free to leave a comment below. Also, for complete list copies of the list that the Les and Phil are playing, visit the blog, which is a link in the description section below as well. So, once again, thank you for watching, and stay around for part two.